Natural gas started to have an increasingly tangible impact on human civilization in the second half of the 20th century, and today it has come to the forefront, affecting the implementation of practically all sustainable development goals. The use of natural gas and its influence on sustainable development, not only for specific purposes but also for pillars of sustainable development, has been conducted. Economic development, social sphere and environmental protection which in cooperation generate uh, allowable, fair and uh, acceptable states. As a result, it has been found that natural gas, unlike other types of fuel and non-fuel sources of energy, possesses the highest rates of all three states, and it is the most powerful means for sustainable development goals achievement, both at the present and in combination with nature-like technologies of obtaining energy in the future sustainable development of human civilization. Lack of access to energy supplies and transformation systems is a constraint to human and economic development. The environment provides a series of renewable and non-renewable energy sources, i.e. solar, wind, hydropower, geothermal, biofuels, natural gas, coal, petroleum and uranium. Increased use of fossil fuels without actions to mitigate greenhouse gases will have global climate change implications. Energy efficiency and increased use of renewables contribute to climate change mitigation and disaster risk reduction. Maintaining and protecting ecosystems allow using and further developing hydropower sources of electricity and bioenergy. Energy is the dominant contributor to climate change, accounting for around 60% of total global greenhouse gas emissions. Since 1990, global emissions of carbon dioxide have increased by more than 46%. Hydropower is the largest single renewable electricity source today, providing 16% of world electricity at competitive prices. It dominates the electricity mix in several countries developed, emerging or developing. Bioenergy is the single largest renewable energy source today, providing 10% of world primary energy supply. To achieve sustainable development goals, then by 2030, ensure universal access to affordable, reliable and modern energy services. Increase sustainability, the share of renewable energy in the global energy mix, double the global rate of improvement in energy efficiency and enhance international cooperation to facilitate access to clean energy research and technology, including renewable energy, energy efficiency and advancing cleaner fossil fuel technology and promote investment in energy infrastructure and clean energy technology. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, continuing our discussion with Dr. Eliubi. Now, Dr. You've explained all the, the technical uh, benefits of natural gas, but we keep talking about going green for the energy and really reducing uh, the uh, carbon dioxide emissions. A lot of talk has been going for natural gas and a lot of talk has been uh, going for electric cars. Or hydrogen. Or hydrogen. So w what do you think is the future uh, expecting? Should we aim for natural gas? Should we uh, aim for electrical uh, generated cars or hydrogen as you've mentioned? Uh, good also vision. Uh, let me just also to highlight that's all philosophy even your opinion even the developments for America and the United States even we talk about thoughts of action. Mm -hmm. All that's continental towards the future they already put three stages. The first mm -hmm. one is transferring from the age of the coal, uh, sorry, from petroleum and to the gas to the coal. That's the first mm -hmm. stage. The second is reduction in mm -hmm. a production of the oil and start uh, reducing of the gas. And this is supposed to be 2030. Mm -hmm. And from 2030 to 2040, that the peaks of the natural gas. Mm -hmm. Then in the intermediate stage, we start from the renewable energies because I consider that till now how they try to find a technology allowed to con in continuous to use a renewable energies during the night. And the storage system now is booming in the international researchers. 
So they now concentrate on what kind of batteries or solar batteries allow to use uh, the daylight mm -hmm. solar or wind to be electricity in a storage during the 13 hours night. And this mm -hmm. is the main concern currently yes. now for the all technology institutes globally. Mm -hmm. In the intermediate, the second part of the second stage intermediate, uh, it will be converted to completely zero emissions. And this is what we start uh, by 2045 up to 2050. Mm -hmm. Then the pumps uh, is coming back again to use the cool uh, at the base mm -hmm. in some uh, countries without no strong economy, if not start. But this is, is completely different to our country in Egypt because the philosophy now for our leader is a start from 2015. Yes. That we have a combination mm -hmm. to lead ourselves as a country to, by 2030 to be a country to reduce 50% of what we gain or what we consume from electricity to be renewable energies in addition to the third stage which is coming after 2030 that we have a percentage to enter with the hydrogen's benefits and also to consider that the continuous mm -hmm. base fuel will be natural gas. Mm -hmm. So now the varieties allow that philosophy of the total world towards their technology, you can believe it well from the 20 uh, um, um, uh, mega countries they are uh, focusing on the manufacturing and industries. And all contribution of all their companies, mega companies, they already classify their budgetary mm -hmm. in three stages. One to with some investment in oil and gas. And uh, part of investment related nuclears. Mm -hmm. And this is maybe st strange yes. that the philosophy of investment now toward the world for energies is coming to to, to three different directions. Mm -hmm. Europe is oriented for green hydrogens. Uh, uh, United States, Asian con con uh, continental completely with the Middle East, Africa, the tower natural gas and part of oil. Uh, the rest of the world, the Far East or Caspians or uh, Baltic, all this area will consider a, a, a cool is a mm -hmm. part uh, of producing electricity. So the orientation is mm. going for the mega com companies, invest in energies, dealing with net net nuclears, renewable energies, and green hydrogens. And this is the consequences will be uh, the philosophy for a future fuel. The future mm -hmm. fuel will be not uh, the traditional one. It will be converted currently on for natural gas. Mm -hmm. Then it will be transferred to electricity as a main engine, electricity engine. The, the, the other one is green hydrogens because in the past uh, we are scared from yes. the use of hydrogens because it's like exploded yes. and this is not. Now is a very high technology improved and developed mm -hmm. to deal well with hydrogens and it's called a green hydrogen. That's the cycle to reduce uh, or to destroy the conjunctions of hydrogen oxygens in terms of water itself, mm -hmm. you can go through the electricity analysis to ex ex exclude the hydrogen and there is a technology now to put the hydrogen in a storage uh, and to use a hydrogen in a near future mm -hmm. as a tank like natural gas inside the car mm -hmm. and you can use the car even by hydrogen yes. in addition to a car from scratch uh, produced mm -hmm. uh, to go directly from the sun to electricity during the car, like yes. what happened in in Japan mm -hmm. and also in South Korea, they have produced also a car currently use a renewable energy directly from solar to electricity yes. and deal with their cars. Doctor, because we're running out of time, one final question: You've highlighted uh, the government's efforts to encourage people to sell their old cars and get uh, really affordable loans to get newly uh, natural gas uh, fueled cars. Now what about the people who actually have new cars nowadays and bought a car uh, during the past year or two? What would you say uh, to encourage the them citizens to start switching to uh, a natural gas uh, fueled vehicle? 
Uh, I think that's clear for all of us. It's uh, up on uh, your, if you believe that you work very much for your economics incomes mm -hmm. and you would like to reduce it or to find some alternative fuel just to, to deal with your money because it's a matter of this one. It's not a matter that we are not a country, we have the old varieties. Yes. In and, and near future, now in, the, in Egypt, mm -hmm. you can enter any fuel station and you'll find three sources. You will find the uh, domestic, uh, uh, sorry, you, uh, the, bit, the diesel or uh, uh, benzene, benzene, you will find the natural gas, and you will find also electricity. So mm -hmm. you will have the, th the stations with three varieties. So yes. I would like to advise these people, mm -hmm. if you interest to deal with some saving of the money, go ahead, because there is no problem with your car, and there is no excuse, because if you said to me the engine, will it, it's, it's uh, maybe a story in the yes. past, and reality now in the science is clear, mm -hmm. that the engine of a natural gas is like efficiency of with the benzene or in diesel, so yes. it's your choice to save some money, better than to use uh, the normal petroleum fuel yes. without considering that your money it may help uh, to be oriented in different uh, classifications. Yes. And last thing, that's uh, even mm -hmm. for the people in taxi or microbus, or even for uh, 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 groups uh, uh, passes, that uh, it's very beneficial even for our countries now. Wherever our governors, it's a benefit to use a natural gas yes. for their uh, fuels uh, is better in terms of cost mm -hmm. and terms of less yes. pollutions. And that's Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it from uh, Dr. Ayubi that actually uh, there are no reasons not to switch to uh, natural gas fueled vehicles. It is uh, sustainable, it's good for the environment, it's a good, clean, uh, green uh, source of energy, and it's uh, a quite affordable uh, one as well for all citizens. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this edition of the Daily Debate, but before we go, I'd like to thank my very distinguished guest, Dr. Gamal Ayubi, the Professor of Petroleum and Energy Engineering and the Economic Expert. Doctor, always a pleasure. Thank you very us. much for you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned for more coming up on that International. I'm Haini Saif. Thank you for joining us.